Hey, what's up, you guys? Harley's here. So I just wanted to kind of share some of my experience with going through the OSCP exam. Um, I just had my second attempt at it this week, and I don't have good news to share, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I really thought that I was ready this time. I thought that I was going to kill it and, uh, and and get the OSCP finally. Um, but that just was not the case. I guess offensive security had a different plan for me. So I just wanted to, to share my experience and my journey um, and, and the ups and downs that, that all of us kind of go through as we're pursuing the OSCP and pursuing a, a career in penetration testing. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that talk about the, the good times and how easy it was for them to pass the exam. And, and I swear, man, those people, they've got to be gods. So <laughs> there, there's no other way to, to describe them. Um, so let me just kind of, I'm going to do my best to have some structure to this video um, and not just be all over the place. Um, but uh, really, I just want to talk a little bit about what the OSCP exam is like. So if you're preparing for it or if it's something that's coming up for you, you know what to expect going in. Um, and then I also want to just maybe do some self-reflection around what I did wrong, where I could have improved and, and how I'm going to do better next time. So to begin, um, let's just talk about the exam a little bit. So uh, for those that don't know, it's a 24 hour thing. You sit down, you've got 24 hours to uh, basically get through and, and hack five different machines. Um, there is a 25 point buffer overflow machine, um, which is exactly 100% like the course material. So if you take good notes in the course material, you're gonna fly through that computer or that machine very, very quickly. In my first exam attempt, it took me two hours to get through it. In my second exam attempt, it only took me one hour to get through it. Um, it's something that if you're comfortable with following the the lab course material and you took good notes on it, it's not gonna be a problem. You know, there's not anything, there's not gonna be any shocking, crazy thing um, that, you know, you're not gonna be prepared for. A great machine too, if you wanted to, to kind of go through it, is BrainPan. Um, you can go through and do that, or if nothing else, just watch the video. But I'd recommend going through the actual content. Um, maybe like the day before you, you start your OSP exam, do that machine. Um, that's what I did the second time around. And that just kind of got me everything I needed to know. Uh, I was super refreshed, super prepared, and I killed the, the buffer overflow um, challenge within an hour. So. That's what I'd recommend. That's actually how I started. So there's that machine. And then there is a 25 point uh, box that is, in my experience, hard. <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. Um, and then there are two 20 point machines and then a 10 point machine. Now, some people say the points don't necessarily equate to like difficulty level. Um, that wasn't my experience at all. The, the 25 point machine in my case was very, very, very challenging. Um, and and honestly, quite difficult. And then the 10 point machine, it was so easy, uh, like 15 minutes and I had that one, you know? So I think maybe I just got lucky, right? I mean, obviously your mileage will vary. Uh, it depends on what machines you get and everything. But um, for the most part, I think the, the point system is, in my case, a, a fairly good measure or indication of difficulty level. So those are all the different computers uh, that you've got to hack through. And once you get in, you get your initial shell, you capture a flag, and then some machines will have a privesque where you get extra points, um, or I guess you only get half points for getting that initial shell, and then you get the rest of the points for completing the privesque and, and getting root control or system level control of the system. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the, the exam is structured. Uh, the proctoring in the exam isn't too bad. Um, really, you kind of forget that they're there, honestly. So you have to connect 15 minutes before your exam is scheduled to start. You connect to the proctoring software. They have you verify your ID. They have you scan the room. To, I don't know what they're checking for, but they're checking for something. Um, you know, they have you check every corner under your desk, all that stuff. And then once you make it through their system, uh, they'll give you access to the VPN right at the time your exam is supposed to start. You run a little troubleshooting thing to, to go out and make sure you can connect to all the stuff. And once they give you the green light, it's all you. <laughs> um, so personally, 
I like to uh, to start with getting my in-map scans running. So I would do my in-map scans on all of the systems. Uh, and while those are running in the background, I then focus on the buffer overflow because you don't really need to scan that one too much. Um, once you figure out what port, you know, the uh, the over the buffer overflow is listening on, um, or the I guess the application that you're going to perform the buffer overflow on. Um, once you figure out that port, you just you go at it. And you know, like I mentioned, as long as you take good notes and you do that other machine ahead of time, that you'll fly right through it. And then from there, I just kind of focused on whatever machines that I could. Um, so personally, you know, I tried every couple hours, I would try to take a break, um, you know, even if it was just to get up and, and, you know, walk around the house or go outside and take a walk. I think that that's super helpful to, to break away from your computer, you know, and then when you come back, it's almost like you reset a little bit, especially if you're stuck on something. Um, I was able to do very well the second time around. I barely missed i barely missed the the amount of points that i needed to pass uh the first time i took this exam i was uh, this was like in march that i took it and then my second attempt here was in october of 2020 um the first time i took it i went into it thinking like okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pass because i i wasn't quite ready i took it a little bit premature and i knew that going in um but that was right before offensive security shifted things so back then you would pay for a lab renewal and then they would give you an exam like a second exam attempt for free so i wanted to leverage that because i knew i was going to renew my labs and so i was like well i might as well use this exam attempt that i have um you know if i'm just going to renew my labs later and i'll get a second one and so i might as well use this as like a learning experience so that's what i did i scheduled that for march and i went through and um I back then only got the buffer overflow, and then I spent the the remaining 24 hours trying to hack into the other four uh, machines, and I couldn't do it. Um, you know, and it was it was an awesome learning experience. I really did learn a lot when I went through that. Um, but it, it was eye opening. You know, it told me, okay, this is this is where you need to improve. This is where you're weak, and this is what to expect. So the second time around, I really thought I was prepared. I really thought I was going to get it. Um, and I did so much better the entire time. Within the first two hours, I already had half the points I needed to pass. So it was really a good feeling. Um, but then, I don't know, like this exam has a way of wearing you down, you know? And if you if you let it get to you, or if you start celebrating too soon, or if you start downing yourself, like there's so many little bitty nuanced things that will throw you off track. Or if you dive down a rabbit hole and you just don't shake it, you know, after if you spend too much time on the wrong thing, it's it's really easy to uh, to let that victory slip away. So, yeah, man, like I was I was one flag away from being able to to have the 70 points that I needed. It could have I could have got that flag in any method. I could have either privest one more machine that I was on, or I could have got an initial shell on the only box I couldn't get a shell on. Um, if I had done one of those things, that would have been enough points to pass, and this video would be completely different. Um, but that's not how it went. So that just tells me, you know, I've got, I've got improvements to do because while I could have just as easily passed, you know, if I just turned one extra stone over, that could have been the missing piece that I needed. Um, I would have just barely passed, you know what I mean? Like by the skin of my teeth. So I, I don't, you know, I don't feel like that that's, even though I could have barely done it, maybe, <laughs> um, I want to kill it. You know what I mean? Like I want to just get all the points uh, I want to get 100, 100 points. I want to root all the the systems. Um, and if I can't do that, then you know I think that there's obviously room for improvement because some people do that, and it's obviously possible. So, um, you know, I want to I want to reflect a little bit on what I did wrong, um, but then also try to help like build myself up because <laughs> it is really defeating to go after something for for 24 hours straight and give it your all, you know, and and not walk away with a win, uh, especially when you're that close. Like it makes you it makes you kind of start to doubt yourself. Um, and I definitely was feeling really really down a couple days ago. You know, I've had a couple days to think about it and and let myself build back up. Um, but it doesn't feel good to fail something, especially twice. You know, um, but if you're like me and if you're in the same boat that I am it's really important that you don't lose sight as to like why you're doing this to begin with, you know, and it's really important to understand that 
this is a extremely challenging certification. You know, when I was 16 years old and I looked at the OSCP, I saw people that had it. I looked up to them as if they were gods, you know, like I would read comments and stuff about people that were, you know, had 20 years of IT experience and they were commenting and saying, like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And when I found out about how the exam was formatted, where you would connect to a VPN and, and you've got to actually hack, you know, computers within a 24 hour period, there's not a lot of exams like that, you know? And I mean, I guess there's more of them now here in the, in the pen testing space and in the 2020 landscape, but, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, there really wasn't a lot of stuff like that, that I knew about at least. And it's still, it's still really a crazy thing when you think about it, you know, you, you, it's not your traditional test that you sit down and you, you know, answer multiple choice or fill in the blank questions on, you know? Um, so for people that pull this off and for people that achieve it, it really shows that they know what they're doing, or at least they know how to do what it is that, that they claim, you know, that they're able to do. Um, and you can't cram for a test like this. And I think it's really important to keep all that stuff in the back of your mind, even if you're the type that, you know, never fails. If you if you never lose when you put your heart to something and you give it your all and you're typically coming out on top, you know, if you typically excel in the things that you do, um, this it's okay if you don't pass this thing, <laughs> you know, like it's it's okay. That what's not okay is is giving up and and stopping that's that's where you really do fail um you know you've got to keep going and it sucks that i'm gonna have to give this a third attempt but it's it's just what i gotta do man that's the journey that that is ahead of me and that's the plan that was presented so um i'm gonna make it happen you know i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna give up so to kind of think about where i can improve for this time um you know, I mentioned when I took this first attempt in March versus now in October, um, it's the, my skills have increased significantly. You know, like I couldn't even get an, like an, an initial shell outside of the buffer overflow in March. Um, and that just wasn't the case this time. Like I, you know, I did, I did really well. Um, and it was just so much easier. I felt so much more like natural. Like when I, when I went through it in March, you know, I'd be typing my in-map scan command and I'd be like looking up the switches that I'd use or I'd have to really think about, okay, well, these are the ports that are open. So which one do I want to do first? And how do I, how do I go through and, and okay, port 80 is open. You know, what do I need to do now? You know, I would have to think about it, if that makes sense. Um, this, the second time around, it's completely different. It's like autopilot mode, you know, like I, I run my in-map commands, I run a I run that and it just goes, like, I don't even think about it. And then once I get the results, you know, I, it's just like, oh, okay, port 80 is open. I do this, I do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. And then I continue, like, it's, it's something different. And I think that that difference came from more time on, on the keyboard and more time practicing this stuff and hacking more computers and producing content like this and, and helping others, but also, you know, taking from others to, to learn as much as you can. Um, and that's what it comes down to is just being comfortable with this. And the more time you can commit, the more boxes you can hack, um, you know, the, the easier it's going to come, the more natural it's going to feel. And so I think that that's the biggest difference between these two things is something that would take me hours before only took me 15 minutes now. And that's just because I know what to look for a little bit better because of experience. So knowing that, I know when I go for my third attempt and if I continue to progress like I'm going to, you know, continue to expand my knowledge, continue to practice machines on Hack the Box um, and, and those type of, you know, CTF based challenges, then it's just going to be that much easier the next time around. So I'm really excited to uh, to see what the next attempt's going to have in store for me. I'm hoping that that'll be, you know, my final attempt so I can move on to the next thing. Um, but I think a big weakness of mine was related to, to privilege escalation. Um, you know, I had two systems that I had initial shells on, I couldn't privask, and that's a problem, you know. Um, I really need to, to work on that. And I think it's natural for that to be, a, a really difficult step for a lot of people because you spend a lot of time scanning and enumerating a box, right? And then you spend a little bit less time exploiting that box. And then you spend a little bit less time 
privilege escalating on that box, right? Because scanning and enumerating that has to happen every single time. Exploitation only happens if you can identify a vulnerability to use. Privilege escalation only occurs after you've exploited the box and you determine you need to escalate, right? So it's just the amount of muscle memory or, or practice you get with a privesc isn't as you know often you don't see it as often as some of those other items that that come into you know forming the the complete hacking what is it i can't remember the term but like the cycle right where you do all the different hacking stuff <laughs> that's the official term um but anyway i i even I, you know i signed up for the cyber mentor heath adams I'm not trying to downgrade his content at all. His stuff is awesome. You know, I love his YouTube channel. I've talked with the guy a couple of times. I've gone through every single Udemy course he has. Great stuff. I still recommend it. It didn't prepare me for the OSCP. Um, I took really good notes when I went through his Privesque course and the boxes that I had, all of the notes that I took with uh, going through his course, none of them applied to either of the machines that I needed the privilege escalate on. So either he's missing something um, or I'm missing something. And and I mean, ultimately it, I'm definitely missing the knowledge, right? Um, so go through the course, especially if you're a beginner, he does a great job at breaking that stuff down. Um, but even even that as supplement to the OSCP material, it's not enough to to complete the exam, at least from my experience. So um, if, if you're lacking in that area, um, there's going to need to be additional resources you you kind of look for and, and seek out. Um, so I'm going to do some research on that, and hopefully I'll find some stuff that you know is is new material that maybe isn't already covered through his stuff. And if I find anything like that, um, I'll compile another video for those that are interested and maybe talk about you know like my top privilege escalation uh, resources. And if you want to check that out, you know, keep your eyes out. I'll make a video on that later. Um, but that's going to be helpful for me because that's a weak point. So I think, I think if I can focus my efforts there, um, I think that's my biggest challenge. You know, the other area might be related to like web app security. I'm not a huge, uh, I haven't had to touch too many web apps, but I feel comfortable with most of the injection techniques I've seen on the OSCP. So SQL injection or even cross-site scripting, though it's not really relevant, I think, on the exam or the labs. Um, but definitely like SQL injection, um, you know, I feel comfortable with that. I've worked with it enough. So, and and like LFI, RFI, those type of things, uh, directory traversal, like those are definitely going to come up and I feel fairly comfortable with them. But I think that that could also be my weak spot is identifying that a little bit, um, you know, and, and just more practice with boxes related to that thing will get me there. So that's my plan. It's just going to be continue to practice, continue to, to soak in information and watch videos and maybe sign up for an extra course on Udemy. I've got two months uh, before I can even take another exam attempt. They've got this two month cool down period. So if you're in the same boat as me, you know, if, if you're struggling to get your OSCP or if you already got your OSCP, but you had a similar path to mine, you know, um, please reach out. I'd love to talk with you, you know, leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter. My handles on the video in the corner there. Uh, check out some of my other social media in the description. Um, reach out to me. Like, honestly, dude, I want to talk to you. <laughs> like, I, I love to network with people. So even if you're not like if you want help or if you have questions or if this is a, a career path you're wanting to go down and, and I can help in any way talk with me, man. Like, let's go through it together. Um, you're not alone. I'm not alone. And you know, the, the community, the InfoSec community is awesome. So let's connect. I'd love to chat with you. Um, and that's it. I don't want to ramble on too much. So I'll probably make another video in the future around, you know, just preparing for the OSCP and all that, if you guys feel like that would be beneficial. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully you know a little bit more about what to expect. And I'll see you guys next time.